thank you for choosing the 12 by 20 wood gazebo from Yardistry. We are confident that you'll find the assembly process straightforward as long as you work through each step in the assembly manual. In addition, this Helpful Hints video offers tips and tricks we've learned along the way for handling some of the more critical steps. Inventory. Before beginning assembly, sort your inventory by laying out each of the wood parts and hardware on the ground. Then, using the stamps or marked reference numbers, take a few minutes to cross-reference each part with the list in the assembly manual. Remember, we're always here to help. Contact us if you find a part that is damaged or missing. Take a moment to record the carton ID stamp for each box that you receive. There is a space on page 14 of your instruction manual to write down the first five digits that come before 14459 and also the letter at the end. Post assemblies. When attaching the post mounts to the bottom of the post assemblies, keep the bolts loose before installing the pan screws on the inside of the post. It's okay to fasten the pan screws on the inside of a post at an angle. Once the screws are secure, go back and tighten the bolts. Short beam assembly. It is best to do this part of the assembly on a raised surface that is flat and solid. Connect the beam short right and beam short left. Make sure you insert the T-nuts into the holes in the beam short left. Get a helper to align the boards at eye level. When they are in alignment, tighten the bolts. To complete the short beam assembly, place two of the boards together with the longest one at the back. All the bolt holes should align. Insert long hex bolts temporarily to help with keeping the beams together. Positioned correctly, the mitered ends should be flush. Insert a screw to hold them in place. If the mitered end isn't flush on the other end, loosen all four hex bolts on the short beam end assembly. Make the necessary adjustments, then insert a screw to hold the boards in place. Tighten the hex bolts before fastening the beam assemblies together with 18 wood screws. Then remove the long hex bolts. Short side assembly. On a flat, solid, and raised surface, place two main posts with the short side facing up. With a helper, place the short beam assembly with the gusset holes towards the bottom of the beam so it sits flush with the top and outside of each post. Attach a hex bolt in the bottom hole. The top hole will remain open for now. Square the post to the post beam assembly, then have a helper hold the gusset in place. The gusset should sit tight to the post and beam assembly. Attach the beam assembly with hex bolts. Then pre-drill and attach the gusset to the posts with lag screws. Repeat for the other side. Frame assembly. You'll need five people for the frame assembly. Make sure you carry out this step in the final location of the structure. Stand both short side assemblies up, having an adult helper hold each one in place. Have three people lift a long beam assembly into place, making sure the beam is flush to the top and the outside corners of the post. Make sure the long beam assembly is tight to the short beam assembly at each corner. Then attach with a hex bolt in the top hole. The bottom hole will remain empty for now. Repeat these steps to install the other long beam assembly. When installing the mid posts, make sure they are centered over the bolt holes in the middle of each long beam assembly and they sit flush with the top of the beam. When attaching the steel cable with bracket to each mid post, make sure the angle of the bracket is towards the top, like this, then attach with a hex bolt. It can be helpful to have someone push up on the long beam assembly to help keep it flush with the top of the mid post when attaching the bracket to the post. Check that the long beam assembly is square to the posts and mid posts, then have a helper hold a gusset in place. The top of the gusset should sit tight to the beam and the bottom of the gusset should sit tight to the post. Attach the gusset to the beam first with hex bolts. Then pre-drill and attach with leg screws to the post. It is important to note that after your gussets are attached, there will be extra holes in the long beam assembly as these beams are common parts with other units. Next, center to each long beam assembly, attach a center roof to beam bracket on top of each mid post. The angled end of the bracket should be facing up and towards the outside of the assembly. 
Make sure they sit flush and tight to the inside face of each long beam assembly, then attach with pan screws. Next, take time to make sure your unit is square and that the measurements on page 23 of your manual are met. The unit should measure 20 feet 1 and 7 eighths inches diagonally from post to post, 10 feet 10 and 3 eighths inches from outside of post to outside of post on the short side, and 19 feet 7 eighths inches from outside of post to outside of post on the long side. Finally, after the unit is square, attach the long and short beam assemblies to the main posts with leg screws in the remaining holes. Then attach each long beam assembly to the mid post with a leg screw in the bottom hole. Roof Assembly Use a solid raised surface for this part of the assembly. It's important that all corners are flush, so get some assistance holding the ends of the rafter corner right, rafter corner left, and rafter into place. When they are aligned, attach with wood screws. It's also crucial to get the positioning of the fascia beam assembly right. If the ends don't align properly, try rotating the fascia beam assembly. Once you get the ends to fit properly against the rafter corner left and rafter corner right, attach with wood screws. When you're attaching the end of the rafter to the fascia beam assembly, make sure the top of the rafter is flush, then attach with a wood screw. If the end of the strap top, mid strap, or either of the bottom straps aren't flush with the edge of the rafter corner left or right, have someone hold the boards in position and fasten with wood screws. When attaching the rafters, fasten it to the bottom first where it connects to the fascia beam assembly. Then fasten it at the top where they connect to the rafter corner left or rafter corner right. Gloves are essential for this part of the assembly because roofing material can have sharp edges. To prevent scuffing, remove the clear and blue protective film from both sides of each aluminum part just before you use it. If you're using a power tool, be careful not to over tighten the roofing screws as that can damage the roofing panels. We recommend hand tightening the screws until they are snug. This part of the step should be done on a flat, solid and raised surface. Position a long panel right onto a small roof rafter assembly so that it is flush to the side of the rafter corner right. The holes on the rib should be centered on the rafter and the panel should overhang slightly over the fascia beam assembly. Now, move the long panel left into place. One rib should overhang a rib on the long panel right. Make sure the other side is flush to the rafter corner left. Once again, the bottom edge will overhang slightly. When the panels are aligned, attach with roofing screws in the locations shown here and on page 36 of your instruction manual. Take care not to over tighten the roofing screws. Place the short right panel onto the roof rafter assembly so that a rib overlaps the long panel right. It should be flush to the edge of the rafter corner right and overhang slightly at the bottom. Repeat to install the short panel left. It's okay if the panel edges aren't quite flush with the rafter corner left or right. Just make sure they don't overhang. If they do, loosen the roofing screws at the top of the assembly and remove the other three. Adjust the roof panels so they are aligned correctly, then replace the roofing screws and tighten. Get some assistance to position a roof edge left 72.2 and roof edge right 72.2 along the bottom of each small roof panel assembly. Make sure the ends meet tight in the center and the other sits flush with the outer edge of the fascia beam assembly. Attach with roofing screws. Peel away a small portion of the backing on the strip of weather seal, then begin attaching it to the rounded bottom of a ridge clip. Next, measure two and three quarters inches from the bottom of the rafter corner right and rafter corner left and make a mark. Place the ridge clip so one edge is flush to the top of the assembly and the bottom of the ridge clip aligns with the mark. As long as one end is flush to the top, the other end will not overhang. Take care not to push down on the ridge clip. Attach with screws, then repeat for the other side. On the back of a large roof panel assembly, place a roof to beam bracket with the angled edge facing up, so the holes align with the holes in the bottom of each of the outside center rafters. 
loosely attached with a hex bolt. Repeat for the second large roof panel assembly. Next, turn the large roof assembly over and make sure they are still square. Once again, gloves are essential for this part of the assembly. Make sure to remove both the clear and blue protective film from each panel before continuing with this part of the assembly. When placing the middle panels on the large roof assembly, make sure they are flush to the top and sides of the rafter top and middle rafter. There will be a slight overhang at the bottom. Before attaching with screws, double check you have placed the panels correctly. The holes in the top of each middle panel will be 3 quarters of an inch from the top of the holes down each side should align with the rafters. With the panels in the correct position, attach each middle panel where they overlap at each center strap. Do not install any screws in along the bottom edge of this assembly. Finish installing the remaining roofing screws. Once again, leaving the bottom row free of screws. Next, on the bottom of each large roof assembly, place a roof edge middle so the holes align with the holes along the bottom edge of the middle panels. Once in the correct position, attach with roofing screws and repeat for the second large roof panel assembly. Peel away a small portion of the backing on a strip of weather seal, then begin attaching it to the rounded bottom of a ridge clip 73.5. Next, measure two and a quarter inches from the bottom of the middle rafter and make a mark. Place the ridge clip so that one edge is flush with the top of the assembly and the bottom of the ridge clip aligns with the mark. As long as one end is flush to the top, the other end will not overhang. Take care not to push down on the ridge clip. Attach with screws, then repeat for the other side. Attach roof panels to frame. Do not attempt this part of the assembly in windy conditions. You'll need at least four people and three ladders for this part of the assembly. Assign one person to remain in the middle throughout the roof assembly to support the roof panels. Have three people lift a large roof panel assembly with spacers up and over the long beam assembly so the middle center rafter fits into the center roof to beam bracket on the mid post. Loosely attach the center roof to beam bracket to the roof panel with a hex bolt. Next, lift the second large roof assembly without spacers over the other long beam assembly. Once again, the middle center rafter should fit into the center roof to beam bracket. You may need to have the person in the middle push up and adjust the panels so that the holes align. If you're still having trouble getting the holes to align, have someone push in on the long beam assembly from outside of the assembly. Once the holes align, loosely attach the bracket with a hex bolt. Attach the two large roof panel assemblies together at the top with four hex bolts. To install the roof to beam brackets on the inside of the assembly, have someone push up on the large roof panel assembly from the outside and two people pushing up at the peak. Have someone attach the roof to beam brackets to the center rafter first, then into the long beam assembly with pan screws. Repeat this for the other large roof panel assembly. Once all roof to beam brackets have been attached with pan screws, go back and attach with hex bolts. At this point in the assembly, go back and make sure to tighten all of the bolts on both large roof panel assemblies. To place the P-cap assembly on your unit, you will need three people and two ladders. Slide the P-cap on edge across the top of the roof panels and line up the bolts with the holes on the roof assembly. Once the bolts are aligned, flip the P-cap over making sure each of the carriage bolts are hanging down through the holes. It can be helpful at this point in the assembly to loosely attach a peak bracket and peak loop onto one of the middle carriage bolts to help keep the peak cap in place. The peak cap will get secured later in the assembly. Have three people lift a left corner roof assembly over the top of a long beam assembly so it sits to the left of the large roof assembly. Have the person in the center push up on the peak cap so the panel can easily slide underneath. Once the panel is in place, attach it to the large roof panel with hex bolts. Repeat this for the right corner roof assembly. Attach the roof panel to the roof to beam bracket with pan screws. 
installing the screw into the rafter first and then into the beam. Repeat this process for the other corner roof assemblies. Finally, go back and tighten all of the bolts in the corner roof assemblies. When attaching the small roof panels, have three people lift the roof panel up and over the short beam assembly and have the person in the middle push up on the P-cap so the panel can easily slide underneath. Using hex bolts, loosely attach the small roof panel to the corner roof assemblies. You may need to have the person in the center push up on the roof panels to help align the holes. Once holes are aligned, tighten all bolts. Repeat this for the second small roof panel assembly. It is important to get the roof placement just right. If necessary, push up on the peak to ensure a tight fit. Next, loosen the screws on the roof edge at one corner. Now you can lift the roof edge just enough to insert a wood screw into the end of the fascia beam assembly. Repeat at the other side to insert a wood screw into the second fascia beam assembly. Place a corner cap where the fascia assemblies meet at one corner. Push up on the corner cap to make sure it's tight to the bottom of the assemblies, then attach with two sheet metal screws on each side. You can push up on the roof edge slightly to access the top holes. When you are done, retighten the screws in the roof edge on both sides. Repeat to install corner caps at each corner of the gazebo. Remember to remove the plastic film from both sides of a ridge cap just before you are ready to install it. If the ridge cap does not slide on smoothly, add a few drops of liquid soap on the inside of the cap before reinstalling. It may also help to have someone push up on the middle of the roof assembly. If the ridge cap still won't go on or an obstacle is blocking it, try bending the ridge clip up on one side. Hook one side of the ridge cap over the bent side, then push down on the other side until it catches. Slide the ridge cap on and have someone push up on the peak cap so the ridge cap can slide underneath it. Then push down to bend the ridge clip back into place. Next, remove the roof screws from each ridge edge left, ridge edge middle, and ridge edge right at the location where the corner roof assemblies meet the large roof assembly. Place a roof edge center so it sits tight to the ridge edges and the holes align. Then reinstall the previously removed roofing screws. At the connection of each corner roof assembly and large roof assembly, slide a ridge cap middle over the ridge caps. You will need someone to push up on the P-cap from inside the unit so the ridge caps can slide underneath. Once in place, attach with screws. To make it easier to install the peak loop, place a piece of tape over the nut, that way it doesn't fall out during installation. Place two roof peak brackets onto the carriage bolts at each end of the roof assembly. Make sure they fit over the rafter corners, then attach the peak loop and tighten. Use pan screws to attach the roof peak brackets to each of the rafter corners. Next. Place a peak bracket over the remaining carriage bolts. Attach the peak loop and tighten. If you placed a peak bracket and peak loop onto one of the carriage bolts when assembling the roof, now is the time to ensure it is tight. Place a tie wrap bracket tight to one end of a tie so that the ends fit tightly together. Attach the tie wrap bracket with one pan screw through the hole closer to the middle of the tie. Now get a helper to hold the tie in place against the rafters so that it is level. Attach the tie to both sides of each rafter with the appropriate hardware. Pre-drill through the other hole on the bottom edge of a tie wrap bracket and attach with a pan screw. On the remaining two ties, attach a double tie wrap bracket RT and double tie wrap bracket LT to each end. Make sure the flat side of the brackets are on the same side of the tie and that brackets fit tightly. Then attach with a pan screw through the hole closer to the middle of each tie. Now get a helper to hold the tie in place so that it's level and the flat side of the bracket faces out. 
you want to make sure the bent side of the double tie wrap bracket sets tight to the middle rafter on the large roof assemblies. Attach the tie to both sides of each rafter with the appropriate hardware. Pre-drill through the other hole on the bottom edge of the tie wrap bracket and attach with a pan screw. On the inside of each post, measure 4 inches down from the top and make a mark. Place the bottom of a 45 degree twist bracket at the mark, then attach to the post and corner rafter with pan screws.